Okay, today, ladies and gents, we're going to do uh, another noble classic uh, to represent the uh, 20 years of the restaurant. It's one of the uh, first dishes on Noble Stand's menu, uh, rock shrimp tempura. Um, we had a few theories about the, uh, the origin of the dish, right? And I came up with one that represents a, a fusion or even a clash of cuisines and culture. Uh, we're taking, you know, Japanese tempura uh, and a very American ingredient, uh, rock shrimp. Very popular uh, Florida, actually, one of the first places that had this, uh, this shrimp. It comes all around the coast of Florida and into the Gulf during season. Uh, shallow water, very hard shell. Um, a very sweet, very delicate uh, shrimp. And I, I, I look at the dish and see the, the influence of you know, Western and, and, and Japanese culture together. You know, we're pleasing uh, the Western palate by having a fried dish with, with a mayonnaise-based sauce, an aioli-based sauce. Um, a little bit of acidity in there. Mind, obviously, I'm from England, so it reminds me a little bit of fish and chips, but um, we take like, again, it's like, with the Japanese flair. So anyway, so we're going to go on to the tempura batter. Very important. Uh, here we're using the purple nishin flour, a very f refined wheat flour. Um, to that, we add uh, egg and um, ice. So we basically start off by ice and water whisk it very thoroughly, incorporate some air with the egg as well. Then we add the flour after. It's not the other way around like you're making a pasta or we add the liquid to the flour, it's the other way. Very important that you don't whisk the flour. So don't, don't use this because you don't want to develop the gluten, you end up with a heavy batter. It's always good to use chopsticks. You mix the flour in gradually um, and break it down. And it's very, it's very, you know, it's, it's okay to have lumps in the batter. It's actually normal. Um, so this is the batter right here. So as you can see, texture-wise, you want to you want to look at it and see on the chopsticks. It's coating the chopsticks, but not not thick. You can actually see the chopsticks through the batter. Very important because that's how your food's going to look at the end. Um, so we're going to take some of this and we're going to keep it on ice as well. Very important to keep it cold because when the cold batter hits the temperature of the fryer, it seizes up straight away. And you get that disparity and it, you get a crisper batter. So it's very important to keep this batter cold. That's why we use ice as well in, in the initial mix with the water to keep it ice cold. Okay, so importantly, we're gonna um, coat the rock shrimp first in a little bit of flour, and then we'll put it into, into the batter. What I like to do too is not, I've got a batch of batter here, so I'll take some of it and use it for fish or shellfish. That way, if you do have a vegetarian, you'll have a separate batter for the, for the vegetables. We'll take enough of this, what we need for the rock shrimp. Now don't be afraid, this is a messy job. You get, you get, you're gonna get your, your hands dirty. But, uh, and as well, when you, when you fry the batter, so I'll show you a certain technique, a little, little, uh, little flicking action that takes some of the, uh, the batter off there. So this is good too, if you have like a, a sifter, you can just uh, toss the, the rock shrimp in the sifter. We, I don't know if we have one, but I'll do it like, uh, home style today there we go use my hands so again the the, the rock shrimp is nicely coated in, in a in a thin layer of flour that'll protect it from the heat also won't absorb grease as well so the thing about japanese tempura they've taken a, an item that was introduced by the portuguese uh to japan early on uh 18th century more or less and they perfected it like they do with everything and um they take something that can be heavy and greasy and made it lighter and less greasy because of the, the, the type of batter, the, the temperature, and also be, being ice cold and the type of flour that we use as well. So again, we're gonna toss this in the batter. Uh, fryer wants to be very hot around Fahrenheit, around 390, because you want that, that hot temperature to seize the, uh, the batter straight away and cook it and, and, to, and to protect the ingredient inside. Now we're gonna do a little technique just uh, shake, shake, we're gonna shake off the excess batter and then we're gonna drop it, but away from ourselves. And with just a little flick of the fingers. If you drop it directly down, the oil tends to splash up and burn you, as we all found out in our early days, working for, for the company. <laughs> and you see that the, uh, the temperature is really, really, uh, really hot. Again, you, you can do a fancy technique by coating your fingers in batter and you can actually touch the surface of the oil, but that's more like with vegetables. What we're gonna do here, is we're gonna separate the shrimp uh, as they cook. It's best not to do it straight away because you want the batter to, to cook. Wash my hand. But 
with a either with a with a chopstick or with a with a, uh, a spider or a fryer. We're gonna break the chopstick. We're gonna break the uh, tempura apart. You know everything's nicely separated. And around a minute and a half, two minutes, it's nice and crispy. Also with, with uh, you'll find with fish, fish products, it's, uh, or anything like fish, shrimp, it's good to actually cook it twice because you, you want the steam to come off the, the, the item, let it rest a second, you can drop it back in, and then it'll, it'll get nice and crispy. So we're gonna cook this, what they call blonde, which is no color on the batter. So this, this now is almost cooked. I'm just gonna let it rest for a second or two just to get the, uh, you know, as, as it's cooking, it'll release steam, which makes the batter soft. And then I'm actually gonna drop it a second time, a little secret. For vegetables, I think you don't need to do that because it has less steam, less water in the product. But let's say for things like fish and shrimp or thick pieces, it's good to just do it a, a, a second time. So we have the first cook in, let that sit for a sec. And then take the excess batter out the fryer. And that's good. I'll do it one more time so you can get a nice crispy product. Which is, because we're gonna coat this in a, uh, a chili garlic uh, aioli sauce. And we don't want it to be soggy. So again, that's just the second time now we're gonna crisp that up. Am I doing good? We're okay so far. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We've got to be thorough. I don't. I don't. I cover the bases. Cover the bases. But uh, okay. Yeah. So you can see the bubbles. The product's still cooking. When when the bubbles slow down, you know that that product's going to be thoroughly cooked steams come out almost there yep and then also you want to make sure you got ready on the side we're gonna have some salad over here we have some sauteed shiitake a little bit of salt pepper uh, and then I don't normally splash that with a touch of sake at the end make it nice and moist we have some chopped chives ready for the dish we'll move all this out of the way right over there and we're ready to go. I can hear that now, it's ready, it's talking to me. Okay, we're ready to rock. So again, there's not too much color on this. Unlike, as I, I, said, I said, I used fish and chips in the analogy before. Unlike that, where it's brown, you don't want that. You want this nice, light, yellow color, it represents good tempura, not overcooked. And we'll take, that's fine, no tongs. So what we'll do now is we'll take the hot shrimp, we're going to put it into a bowl. So again, we get, make sure we get the excess grease off of this. Again, Japanese tempura is all about not being greasy. This is nice and dry. As you can hear it going to the bowl, very crispy. So this is uh, this one's for the customer. This is for me later, as you can see. I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> okay. So what we'll do? That's our bowl ready. What, what I want to do is before I dress this, I don't want it to sit there getting soggy. I'm going to get everything else ready first. So I'm going to dress the salad very quickly. This is a user dressing, another classic re uh, dressing from Nobusan, one of the originals. Just a light, light, again, light dressing on this. It's not really about the salad. This is just to provide a bed for the rock shrimp to sit on. User dressing, grapeseed oil, user juice, black pepper, garlic. Goes with everything. Anyway, anything citrusy is good for seafood. Lovely, so in the center of the of the bowl, it's good to go. Now we're ready to toss this, which is the fun part. I'm gonna hit it with the mayonnaise first, or the, the chili garlic aioli first. I don't put the user first, because it tends to, as soon as it hits the fish, it absorbs the user juice, and you don't want that, because you're gonna get one or two pieces that would be very acidic, and it won't spread evenly. So, we'll put this on just enough, about, about a tablespoon and a half. And then on top of the mayonnaise, I'll put the yuzu juice because then that will help it mix together. Again, I'm just going to toss that in the bowl. 
Now at this stage you can either mix the shiitake in this or put them on top afterwards. I'll put them on top afterwards because it provides a nice contrast on the color. And I think we have enough uh, sauce going on here. So we'll place this on the salad, build it up a little bit in the center. And you want, you want to work relatively quickly because I said with tempura, like sushi, without, you know, it's, it's, you want it to be served as fast as possible, as fresh as possible, to retain that nice crispiness. So tempura has to be, you know, very fast. That's why they have tempura bars in Japan because you get the food straight away, like a sushi bar. That's pretty good. Four or five pieces of shiitake spread around. Again, provides a nice contrast and flavor to the dish, the Japanese element. You have that savoriness, umami of the shiitake with the shrimp. Then we're just going to finish that with a bit of chopped chives. And that's it. Oh, thank you.